Hello, you are watching Unipro Eugene podcast. Today we have a special episode. We are going to talk about what's new in the latest Eugene release, version 162, which was released this week. There is a set of new features and we will discuss them all briefly. So stay tuned. First of all, we are glad to present you the Eugene Circular Sequence View. The view was requested by our users many times, so we have implemented it in Eugene version 162. To invoke the view, we will open a sequence. There is a new icon at the Sequence View toolbar. Pressing it, we toggle the circular view. The view is active now. The inner circle represents the sequence clockwise, and the scale marks show the corresponding sequence positions. The sequence annotations are represented as curved colored regions at the outer side of the circle. The circular view helps to navigate within a sequence. We can select an annotation by left click, and the annotation will be focused and highlighted in all three circular panoramic and annotation editive views. Also, we can select a region at the circular view, and the selection will appear also at the panoramic and the detailed views. We have also added a set of new features to the multiple sequence alignment editor. Let's open an alignment. In the new version, we can select any alignment region to perform editing operations. To do so, we bring up the context menu and select the edit item. Let's delete the selected region. As we see, the region was deleted. Other changes concern the consensus. We bring up the context menu and select New Consensus Mode menu item. In the Appear dialog box, we can select the consensus type and read the information about this type. Also, we can specify the consensus representation scheme by moving the threshold slider. It is nice to mention that one of the consensus types was developed by one of our users, Viktor Levitsky, from Institute of Cytology and Genetics of the Siberian Division of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Thanks, Viktor! Yet another feature in the new version of Eugene is an ability to perform remote workflows. Let's open the workflow designer. We can see the new run mode pulldown. Selecting local host pulldown item leads to working with the designer locally, as it always has been. So, we select the remote machine menu item. Now we will select a sample schema to proceed with, for example, align sequences with muscle. Let's specify the location to read MSA blocks from for alignment reader. As we can see, we can specify the type of location local, this computer, and remote computer. To enter the remote location, we will have to type it manually. OK! Now we need to specify the location to write the alignments into. The resulting location is local. When done, we press Run Schema button. The Remote Machine Monitor dialog box has appeared, where we can specify the remote machines to run our task on. As always, the machines must be reachable from our local machine, and have Eugene running on them. I'll add one such machine from my network. When done, clicking the Run button starts the remote task. 
Eugene Sequence Export Dialog has been improved significantly. Let's open a nucleotide sequence. Now we select some sequence region, bring up the context menu and select Export Export Selected Sequence Region. As we see, the file format is now specified directly from the dialog. Also, if we choose Translate to Amino Alphabet option, we can specify a genetic code to translate the sequence with. We finally enter the new file name and press Export. Here is our translated amino acid sequences. It is possible to perform the bug translation now. We select the corresponding sequences items in the current project view, bring up the context menu and select Export, Export Sequences. Again, we can choose a format to export the sequences into. If we check the Translate Back to Nucleate Alphabet option here, the new options become available. We can choose between the most frequently used codons and frequency distribution translation schemes and select the organism to take the frequency table from. Selecting the frequency distribution option leads to translating with frequency distribution where the more frequently a codon is used the more probably it will be the translation for the amino acid. Yet another change concerns the Restriction Enzymes plugin. Let's activate the Open Gene Bank Sequence view by selecting it in the Windows Program menu. We bring up the Context menu and activate the Restriction Sites search. In the new version of Eugene, we can save current enzyme selection by pressing Save Selection button for later use. Also, we've updated the Rebase database files contained in the Eugene packages. Telling of the sequence analysis, we should mention Smith Waterman plugin changes. There are two new scoring matrices to perform search in a nucleotide sequence, and a lot of new matrices to perform the search in an amino acid sequence. Also, Every matrix is now supplemented with detailed information. Another feature we would like to talk about is importing sequence annotations from the CSV, comma separated values file. To do so, we right-click at the sequence item within the current project view and select Import, Import annotations from CSV file. In the appear dialog box, we specify the file to read annotations from. For example, this one. By pressing Preview button, we can bring up the row and the resulting views of the annotations contained in the input file. By the way, the feature was requested by our user, Andy Kraus. Thanks for the interest, Andy. We conclude our What's New in Eugene presentation with mentioning of new Linux Eugene binary packages. We get back to our download page. In the Linux section there are two new links to the 32 and 64-bit versions of the binary distributions. All you need to do to install Eugene on your Linux is just to download the corresponding package, extract the files to your local drive and then simply run the eugene.sh shell script. That's all for today. We hope you will enjoy the brand new Eugene version. And thank you for watching.